maximum nourishment. Okay, so why must we strive for optimal nutrition? Because it's one of the building blocks of health. Health equals eat well, which is the nutrition part of it. Move well, which is the exercise part of it. You have to exercise, it's part of our physiological makeup. Think well, which is the mental part of it. And function well, which is the nervous system part of it, the supreme system that controls every cell, organ, and tissue in our body. If we can really put those four um, parts into our equation, I think then we can have amazing health. Eat well, move well, think well, function well. We have to have optimal nutrition because it's part of the equation. What will happen to our bodies if we do not consume the right foods? Our body goes into survival mode. We talked about this last week. Our body is always either surviving or thriving. Let's kind of write that down again where we visited last week because we'll visit this again. I like to call this my common sense corner. So we'll go there one more time. Common sense corner. Is our body smart or stupid? Smart. 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 Is our body either surviving or thriving. I think, again, that our body is always in one mode or the other. There's no in-between or just getting by. Our body's either trying to survive from what we're doing to it, our body's thriving with what we're doing to it. Do we get sick or do we do sick? We do sick. Again, we do high blood pressure. We do high cholesterol. We do those things. It happens over time. Those toxins accumulate. It puts in our body into a surviving mode. Our body is trying to detoxify and get stuff out. If we put it into acidic mode, then our body is not functioning right. Okay. So, what are you putting in your mouth every day? Are you building something? Are you building something good? Meat and dairy are staples in the American diet. It, it may be hard to imagine life without a cheeseburger or a milkshake, and I'm not saying you have to do that, but it, obviously it's not an everyday thing. But that's, you know, when we think about the American diet, that's part of the building blocks of that, you know, of, of what the diet is, when we, especially when we look at the top 10 um, things bought at a grocery store. The, the truth of traditional thinking of what nutrition is is truly killing Americans. And we look at the health statistics last week with all the numbers of how poor the United States ranks in the level of health in the world, it's really very poor. WHO, the World Health Organization, ranks us uh, 37th of health of, of a nation, of all nations in the world, 37th. But yet we're second in amount of money spent on health care. So we spend the most, but we've got really poor health. And again, it's not that the medical community doesn't do fantastic jobs at some things, and what I mean by some things is crisis care, like accident and trauma, but when it comes to what I like to call health care, they're failing, big time, with the way that they treat the symptom, but the true cause and the source, when we boil it down to it, is our choice. It's my health, not my doctor's health to take care of, not anybody else's health to take care of. I'm responsible for my health. That's the other thing I like to put in the common sense in corner, the corner. Who's responsible for your health? You are. I'm responsible. I'm the one that makes the choices of what goes in my body. I'm the one that makes the choice if I exercise or don't exercise. I'm the one that makes the choice on how stress affects me. It's my beliefs of how that stress works. I can either take it and let it beat me up, or I can take it and find a way to deal with it. We, we must open our minds to a new way of, of taking in our nutrition and how we're gonna, how we're gonna go with it. It's, it's not genetics. When they talk about ill health and disease, 4% is genetics. 96% is lifestyle driven. So it's the choices that you're making. Some risks to think about. Well, I gotta figure out where I'm doing with that. Some risks to think about. Death from heart disease.
for vegetarians compared to non-vegetarians is half. So just statistics. Blood cholesterol level of vegetarians compared to non-vegetarians is 14% lower. Incidence of high blood pressure in meat eaters compared to vegetarians is 16 times higher. What about cancer risks? When you flip the page. I know I hit that button on the left side. Risk of lung cancer for people who frequently eat green, orange, and yellow vegetables is 30 to 60 time percent lower. Prostate cancer. Men whose intake of cruciferous, oh, I was ever that word. <laughs> cruciferous vegetables is 41% lower. Prostate cancer is the most common cancer among American men. Cruciferous vegetables are broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, collards, kale, and turnips. Colon cancer in women who eat red meat daily compared to those who eat it less than twice a month is 250% higher. That's from, I got that from In the Food Revolution, How Your Diet Can Save Your Life in Our World by John Robbins is where I got that number. Why do we eat? We eat to energize, right? We have to have our calories and that's uh, energizes us. Good foods can help our body perform at its best, right? Providing the energy that we need to do our stuff to get our stuff done. Choosing the wrong foods will zap our energy, leave us sluggish mentally and physically. We eat to grow and develop. What we consume is eventually going to regulate our body functions, help drive our cell division and everything that our body can use to heal with. We eat to purify and cleanse. We want to begin each day with a new slate. Our organs need to be cleansed in order to work efficiently. They can't be taxed with toxicity and expect them to work optimally. We got to take in cleansing foods. Why do we eat to prevent disease and fight disease? The right foods can help create that powerful base for our body to build upon. It creates that internal environment. Think about it like a fish aquarium. Think about all of our cells, organs, and tissues like the fish inside the aquarium. And what we eat and drink is the water that goes in. If that water is amazingly polluted and trashed, and, then, and plus the elimination from the cells, organs, and tissues, which is the fish, if it just keeps on adding toxicity to it, eventually your environment, your environment shot, nothing can live there. Same thing happens in the body. It's just a, it's an environment. That's all this is, physiologically and chemically. And if you work with it, you can have amazing health. We eat to nurture our outer beauty. Nutrients contribute to our physical appearance, obviously. And that's where a lot of people hang their hat. But it's way more than that. It's not about how we look, it's about how we function. An improper diet, though, can look us, make us look tired and worn down. You know, when a lot of people can complain about low energy, it's a lot of it because of the nutrition, obviously, that they choose to eat. And then they, 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 they fake themselves into thinking they have energy when they're taking stimulants coffee, soda, sugar, stuff like that, to fool themselves and to think that they have energy. They don't have energy, they're dead tired. And we need to socialize and enjoy. You know, eating allows us social situations where we can go with friends and hang out and eat. And it's, it's okay at times to eat um, negatively for the body, but then we have to come back to where we start with a clean slate and get our body alkaline again and work on um, getting our body to function the way it's supposed to function. Seven components of food. Carbohydrates, proteins, I'll roll through this because a lot of you guys know this. Fats, we know that. Vitamins, minerals, water, and fiber. Seven components of food. All are needed to maintain bodily functions. All of them, we need all of them. Our daily goal is to consume foods that will help serve us to the fullest. We want to empower the body and the mind. I want to empower you with information that I can help take your health to an optimal level. Carbs. It is the primary fuel for our body. Sugars, fibers, and starch is considered carbs. They get broken down into glucose. That's what carbohydrates get broken down into. Glucose is a key energy source for our cells. 